be picked up. He does have damage, but then you have to scale up. You need some items. You need you need a few other things for them to work out. So, oh man, for the casters, let you guys know the draft has finished, and I'm pretty sure you guys heard our analysts, their opinions on the draft. We're gonna throw it to you guys fast, give you guys a little bit of time to digest. But what do you August guys and the Minotaur? Good luck. And this is indeed a debut Bruno pick in the group stage of MSC 2024. And there's a reason why they call him the International Marksman. It's because he's one of the carries for his team. So if by any chance we don't have the comms, but we can only assume, hey, coach, give me that. Give me that, Bruno. Then this could be one of their only ways that they see they can take down Falcon. I, I, I don't know. I like double insurance policies, right? I, I think that E1 could have gone for the Vixana if he wanted to. I would have much preferred the Farsa. Wow, well, he just ate that. He, just, he, he walked just up did. and just ate that. In astral form, too. <laughs> oh, boy. That's interesting. Don't see that happen very often. But overall, I do agree with the analyst. I do think it might have been a little bit of a blunder. So I'm hoping that Lung really shows up here. And he's going for Master Assassin. So I'm glad that he's trying to win his lane. Uh-huh. Uh, checking in again. Oh, it's a good amount of CC from KidX again. Uh, that's how you build Bruno, folks. If you want to try Bruno, if it works out, then you double down on it. Uh, interesting to see that Falcon Esports still committing onto that Ruby. They really like the Ruby. Yeah, they do quite like the Ruby. I mean, it's all about sustain, right? CC, Ruby generally does the same thing. You're looking for that pick in that back line. You're trying to clump them up as much as possible. And then you just, instead of like raw tanking it, you just have enough spell bank, uh, spell vamp to keep yourself alive. And I think that oh. for now, Dax, I mean, not going to find that first blood just yet, but it looks like the mid duo is really struggling here from XYG. Uh-huh. Up top, you, you do see these two gold laners taking their time. Uh, not much of action just yet between Benny and Lung. Kill VJ dueling against these two. And he does trigger the Shah Essence there. Royal Milk gonna wail away. Get some gold from this tier Ooh. one down bottom. Really good read coming in from XYG. They respond to the potential dive here, and uh, KLVJ honestly doesn't take too much damage. His team bails him out of that situation, and if they can find PX7 here, that'd be the most ideal just before he hits level four. You can feel the urgency Wait, of what? these mid laners. They want to go and get that level four sooner, Kiel? Huh? I mean, Kale's in a lot of trouble here. At this point, he's not going to have enough life to even use the Black Dragon form. Uh, and then the Flicker Force oh! from Royal Milk into the Admin Fender to find first blood. That's great, but he wants that level four. But no Fury already comes out from the side of Kid X, and they've already found a god. Young Zed is going to be the next to fall. No like and pound reset from Dax, unfortunately. Walks away with one HP and a dream. XYG facing. The wrath of Falcon Esports. They didn't expect for them to be this aggressive. And now look, Dax attempting Grand Theft Purple. Can they get it? Does have a retribution. Oh yeah, Petrify's already come out as well. KLVJ quickly into the Black Dragon form to get himself out of there. And this is why the double sustain is annoying, right? PX7 just bails them out when things get really tight. That's it, Dax has one star now. Mm -hmm. He committed Grand Theft Purple successfully, got away with it too, with impunity. Same story still up top, uh, gold-wise, uh, that is Falcony Sports up by, wow, a whopping 2,000 gold already. Two kills, a turtle, and I wonder how much of that is on Benny. Mm, well, let's here have a go. look here. Wow, 500. Oh, okay. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Trickle-down economy. It is, it is a trickle-down effect, right? And you can see that, like, every single motions on the map have costed them something. Even for PX7, he is quite significantly ahead against E1. He's two levels up on E1 right now. And all because a bad turtle fight, and more importantly, didn't hit level 4 on time by the EXP lane. Mm -hmm. The EXP lane skirmish really benefited Falcon Esports, and I'm pretty sure that was to play. That was on purpose. And now they're going to continue to pressure top lane this time around because this buys Falcon Esports more room to rotate. Uh, they can try and engage. And if anything, they can do it on two fronts. Look, down bottom. Okay, LBJ is going to get hit by Lycan Pouch. Shaw Residue Prox Petrify as well to make sure that Dax has no insurance policy to find the oh. kill. Astro Echo. Ooh, skill shot right direction. Not enough range. That was close. That was close. Maybe about an inch or two from death. Dax was going to be able to regenerate off these little minions, these creeps near the turtle, spawning in about 10 seconds now as Falcon Esports alights from that top lane. 
pressure. They're gonna go ahead and go for this turtle now. I'm curious. I would like to check in with Lung here. How is he doing in his lane? Because he's been left on an island for quite some time, and it looks like he, uh, I mean, previously he was leveled down on Benny, but that's because the wave was pushing in. But let's look at the turtle for now. Black Dragon form already out for KLBJ, but no one's fury to follow it up, and it looks like, nah, Dax is gonna be able to get the retribution, no problem, with Zed as a consolation prize. It's pretty impossible for XYG to walk in like that, right? I mean, with the Mignolan Fury alone, is a big issue. Well, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice. Well, shame on me still. I think <laughs> the other one goes the other way. I think <laughs> shame on you. But yeah, no, I think this should be the last straw for XYG. Maybe they'll face him up front. The kill is going to go down here. Unless... Oh! What? Ah, oh, he walked out of it! He walked out of range and ended up dying! <laughs> I'll count that as an outplay. The king oh. does it. I'll count it as an outplay. All that right. was a 3v1. <laughs> there was no reason for him to do that. Look at, let's watch it again. <laughs> look at Dax. Just look at Dax. You can see the range of PX7's Nether Realm, right? And Dax just so happens to walk out of it and gets tapped by the shot. <laughs> It was the Shah, and right out of range, too. Uh, Shah has larger range than Netherrealm. Oh, uh, so funny. Can't no, that's mechanics. Dude, that's so funny. Oh, man. I mean, Dax is probably like, ah, it's not the biggest deal in the world. A little sad, of course. Yeah. But let's look at the item build, because right now, I think that... Oh, man, Zed, he is he is greedy. A brute force breastplate first item to be able to not only run away from his opponents, but if XYG can turn things around, he's going to be running at his opponents. <sighs> it's tough because, again, Falcon Esports has multiple damage sources. Uh, very different in uh, nature, too. There's physical, there's magic, and by getting Brute Force, I guess that's the most economic way of him getting both. It's hybrid, and again, less CC. So you're looking at less from the Minoan Fury, less from the pull, uh, less from the hook from Royal Milk. So I get it, I understand, uh, but it is a little greedy. I do agree. Now in mid, Royal Milk, dancing around two. Their comp is so unkillable. I mean, just look, look at how minimal damage they're doing to him. And like, even, even if he does take the damage, he just walks down to the bot side of the map, heals back up to full, comes back to the, it comes back to the neutral, and it's just like, I don't need a recall, ever. I'm good. Let's go. Turtle, here, started up by Dax. Kill VJ, watch it from the bush. Wait. River control in. Oh, what, 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 what? And then Zed gets pulled in. What's going on now? The interception from Falcon Esports. XYG just let it happen. They just turned a blind eye to it. Less of an intersection. I think Zed was just going the wrong way. Zed was just walking in, assuming he wouldn't get punished. <laughs> I mean, he, won, he flickered out of there. Uh, I. I think they didn't read the situation right. That's the only way that I, we can explain this. You can almost see it in Zed's face. Like, how could I have let that happen? Mm -hmm. How could I have walked into Falcon Esports crosshairs like that? Oh. Oh, that's such a feels bad for XYG. And I mean, now with the lead and momentum that Falcon Esports has, you can definitely tell from where they come from their region, they get real aggressive when they have that lead. And now? They're the ones facing this kind of aggression. Again, folks, as a recap, in the finals of the China qualifiers, XYG swept their opponents. XYG swept KBG. So this here, this is the other side of the coin for them. Now Royal Milk, 3v1. Oh, Royal Milk. Oh, saved by PX7. Oh, Royal Milk, he almost made the mistake. Ah, oh, nearly walking out of it before the projectile connected. I, again, this is the beauty of the double sustain comp coming in from Falcon Esports. They love doing this, right? They love having the Nether Realm. They love having uh, motivational roar. It could be switched out for Florence, do. It doesn't really matter as long as you sustain. And even without those supports, all of them have some level of sustain. Benny with the shields, mm -hmm. Dax with the lifesteal, Royal Milk with the ungodly amount of lifesteal and spell vamp as well. Five to one, 6k gold lead ahead for Falcon Esports. XYG is going to struggle oh. to keep this turret. Uh, oh. I mean, they can fight if they want to, but they find the I'm offended flicker backwards, and it's too late. The Minion Fury stops any aggression from XYG, and even KLBJ, he hunkered around for a little too long, and the Nether Realm is going to keep every Everybody alive, how many chain kills can you get? And it looks like XYG admit, okay, we're only giving you two. We can't give you any more, man. Uncle, I call uncle, and they back off. Oh, They're no. eventually gonna get the orange and that turret up top that they started. Odd how mid lane tier one hasn't been touched. Look, now just eventually they'll push. Oh, uh, it's 
I don't know. I don't know what to feel about this game. I feel like XYG aren't playing that well this time around in game number two. I think they did much better in game number one. Something in game number one broke them. I think it, oh. something must have snapped. Something changed because now XYG, they're, they've been playing on the back foot since minute one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There were small outplays, small little mechanical, uh, you know, double two steps here, but Falcony Sports have been calling the shots. They, they, they've, they've been setting the tempo and the pace, and XYG aren't ready to dance. Yeah, it, it's so true. I mean, let's look at the items first before we continue the subject, right? Because uh, now we finally see fully completed boots from Lung. He was greeting out with the Haas Claw into the Berserker's Fury, and I think he's going to go into the Malefic Roar as his third, but it, it's kind of late now that Benny has the Holy Crystal, so he still can't win that 1v1 if given the chance. Yep, and the Radiant Armor and God Yang and Zed, sure it'll help you from PX7 and Benny, but what about Dax and Royal Milk. Now that Dax is the endless battle too, you're playing with two damage. Uh, it's a little tough here, but let's see whether an inhibitor falls, right? They've got synchronized waves. They're all pushing at the same time. It's really stretching out XYG and E1. He's so low. Look, he's already down 50%. Here comes the Black Dragon farm because KLBJ needs to force them away to protect these inhibitors. They don't want Checkmate Angle this early on into the game, but Falcons, one last wave up on that top side and maybe cracks it open. Yes, gets it open just in time. And now they back away. Checkmate angle set up. All according to plan. About two minutes until another Lord comes through with a contest from XYG far from the horizon. They can't even think of defending uh, here because they have oh. to watch out. Oh. They can engage. Uh, I, I mean, God, yeah, he tries to get on out of there with the Primal Wrath. Ends up getting punished too with the I'm Offended. And that's going to be GG. Well played. As FCON 1 has just landed. The Crystal going to get cracked open but after Dax gets the Maniac, El Falcon Esports does it again. Both teams tried to draft as close a lineup to as they did in game one. And eventually, it's Falcon's aggression. What we were Nice, dude. That's the kind of mentality you need. Right? It's like, who do you want to face? All, All of them. them. At, oh. the, same At the same time. At the same time. At the same time. Just for three, three on one, I yeah. win. I'd win. I'd win. Yeah. One, I'd win. Well, I'd win. <laughs> let's talk about this game, by the way, because yeah. I believe that here we have uh, we have an agreement that this Bruno. game, this game, is won, won and lost because of the draft. Oh, yeah. And as we are watching the highlights, this is merely an evidence of what we were saying during the draft. Unfortunately, it was difficult. There was a time where we're looking at the items long as well as uh, Benny. We're just battling out up top, but Benny was ahead for a thousand gold over his lane matchup. Uh, Dax was essentially free, freely running across the map because of the Faramis as well as the Minotaur. If there was a Faramis, if, there, if he is about to die, Faramis pulled this up. Actually, the only reason why he died was because he himself went out of the range of the mm. Nether Realm. Yeah, this is, 